The Atari 7800 was developed by General Computer Corporation back in 1983 and addressed several problems that consumers had with the Atari 5200. It was the world's first backwardly compatible game system, allowing it to play the impressive Atari 2600 library. It also featured self-centering controllers, a pause button, never-before-seen graphic and sprite capabilities, and mediocre sound. Yeah, we all know they used the sound chip from the Atari 2600 as a cost-cutting measure. If only it had a pokey. So now let's cover every commercially released Atari 7800 game up until about 1990 or so. There's several good to great games and there's also a few rather awful ones such as Ace of Aces. This is a World War II bomber simulation, and it's far too complicated for a simpleton like me. Looks like it originated on the Commodore 64, and it probably should have stayed there. I do appreciate the effort the programmer put into it, but I really can't give it a grade since I just can't get into it. Alien Brigade This is a light gun game that takes its inspiration from arcade gun games like Operation Wolf. Fortunately, you can also use a joystick controller to play. Shoot the aliens, but not the hostages. The graphics are really good and the sounds are, you know, pretty good. But overall, this game is a blast. A grade. Asteroids. A conversion of the arcade hit. Just blast the rocks and UFOs to get the high score. This is a cool version because it includes several two-player modes like team and competition. While it's a great version of the game, I was always bothered by the perfectly round and colorful asteroids. Shouldn't they be all one color? Or at least in vector? Oh well, it's still a great game. A grade. Ball Blazer. This is absolutely the best version of the Lucasfilm Games game where you play a futuristic version of soccer with ships called rotofoils. The scrolling of the play field is silky smooth and the sounds, thanks to the built-in pokey chip, are incredible. I love the fast and frantic gameplay. This is definitely an A grade. Barnyard Blaster. A light gun game where you shoot objects on your grandfather's farm. Now I do have a light gun, but it doesn't work correctly. So I really can't play this properly. But I can play with emulation and, you know, it's an okay game. But it would be more exciting if there were multiple critters on the screen at once. The graphics are actually pretty nice here. B grade. Basket Brawl. Atari's answer to arch rivals, only in this game you can actually kill your opponents. Way to be edgy there, Atari. This game has some good graphics, but rather lackluster sound. But, you know, I guess that's to be expected. The gameplay can be fun if you forget about playing basketball and focus on attacking your opponents. B grade. Centipede. The arcade classic game we've all been playing since 1980, and it's what I call a trifecta game. It officially appeared on the 2600, 5200, and the 7800. This version of Centipede is very good, but the programmer took a few liberties in the graphics department, and it's really not a one-to-one -one copy when it comes to the colors and enemy graphics. The Centipede looks good, though, and this game plays great. It might be better if it worked with a trackball, though. Also, I kind of wish there wasn't a border around the playfield. A grade. Choplifter. The classic computer game with a few improvements on the 7800. Well, at least it's played out in the daytime. I used to play this a ton trying to save every hostage, but I just don't think it's possible. I mean, the enemies are relentless and can attack you without warning. It can be fun, but overall, you know, I give it about a C grade. Commando. The classic Capcom arcade game where you play as Super Joe, 
blasting enemies, and rescuing soldiers. That kind of seems to be a theme with 7800 games, doesn't it? Anyway, this one is great. Fast action, great graphics, and the only other 7800 game to feature the Pokey Chip. You know, I always thought that the NES version was better, but I'm starting to rethink that. A grade. Cracked. Or cracked. Or crooked. Something like that. Protect your eggs by shooting enemy birds, snakes, rats, dragonflies, and I think that's the Noid? Weird. In a sense, this game is kind of like Missile Command, where you have to protect your cities, or in this case, eggs. But the fact that you don't use a light gun makes this game nearly impossible to play. And that Rooster Ranch thing is just ridiculous. Well, it, it's got some nice graphics anyway. D grade. Crossbow. The XD arcade game where you use your light gun, or crossbow, to protect a group who's invading Mordor. Well, that's my idea anyway. Just shoot everything that tries to kill your friends. That's basically what you have to do. These guys are gonna die. The graphics are great and there's several different stages. The sounds and music aren't too bad. This is a greatly fun game. A grade. Dark Chambers. This game is a combination of Gauntlet and its inspiration, Dandy. In it, you adventure through dungeons killing monsters, collecting keys, opening doors, and most importantly, collecting treasure. There are power-ups to help you on your quest as well as... um... I don't remember. Probably 20 or so stages? I do remember playing through all of them and being disappointed that it just looped over and over again instead of ended. Fun game, but I wish it was a little faster. B grade. Desert Falcon. Atari's answer to Zaxxon, only not really. This game is more than just shooting, it has a very unique power-up system where your bird collects and combines objects on the ground. Then you can get more powerful shots, air bombs, invincibility, points, and other stuff. Graphics look a little bland to me, but overall it's a pretty fun game. B grade. Dig Dug. This is another trifecta game appearing on the 2600, 5200, and here on the 7800. Surely you know this is an arcade conversion of the classic Namco arcade game where you play as Dig Dug popping enemies with his air pump. This one has some very good graphics, gameplay, and sound. One of the best home conversions of Dig Dug. A grade. Donkey Kong. Oh boy, here we go. This is a conversion of the popular Nintendo arcade game, but let's cut to the chase. The sound is absolutely terrible. But the game itself is it's actually pretty good. It does only have three stages though, which is kind of disappointing. The game plays nicely if you can get past that sound. B grade with the volume turned down. Or if you have the means, check out the hacks and homebrews that improve the sound greatly. Donkey Kong Jr. Here we go again. <laughs> now Donkey Kong has been captured by the evil Mario and has to be rescued by Jr. Like father like son, the sound is quite terrible. However, this game has all four of the stages. Graphics are good, as is the gameplay, and I'm sure there's some hacks out there that improve the sound. Be great, as long as you turn off the sound. Double Dragon. The classic arcade beat-em-up. I remember seeing the ads for this, and I just had to have it. 
At the time, I thought these were the best graphics on the 7800. I just wish that the characters were a bit more detailed. Gameplay is kind of rough in this version. The only effective attack is the elbow smash. I actually beat the game just by doing that. It's not a great conversion, but it has its moments. C grade. F14 Tomcat. There are no less than four flight games on the 7800, and this one is by far my favorite. You pilot an F-14 right off the aircraft carrier Enterprise, just like in Top Gun. Then you try to shoot down as many enemy planes as possible. If you just use your guns, you can get a higher ranking than by using your missiles. This game's got some great graphics and sounds. A grade. F-18 Hornet. I never owned this one, and I always thought that it had to be better than F-14 Tomcat. Boy, was I wrong when I finally played it. The polygon graphics are kind of cool, but it plays in such a small window, and you only fly in one direction. You really can't turn that much. Sounds are okay, I guess. C grade. Fatal Run, a post-apocalyptic racing game that reminds me heavily of Road Blasters. Your job is to race from city to city delivering medical supplies, shoot enemy cars and collect fuel pods. Then you can buy improvements to your car, making the game a bit easier. This one has some really great graphics. The sounds are okay, but the music is annoying. I kind of like the parallax scrolling when you arrive at a city. A grade. Fight Night. A boxing game where you, um, box several opponents? This is presented in a side view and has some interesting animations. Otherwise, the graphics are pretty lame. Controls are ridiculous and really don't make any sense to me. I just kept swinging wildly to beat my opponent. And doing that really doesn't make the game any fun. D grade. Food Fight. A conversion of the GCC developed Atari Games arcade game where you play as Charlie Chuck who just wants to eat an ice cream cone. But those annoying chefs are always in the way. Grab that banana and toss it at them. Also pies, tomatoes, parsley, and my favorite, watermelon. The graphics are not much to look at, but the music and more importantly, the gameplay is amazing. A grade. Galaga. I believe this was the first console port of the popular Namco arcade game. After Galaxian on the Atari 2600, I was excited to see this one on the 7800. The graphics are just a little off though. The aliens look about right, but your ship looks wrong. Very, very wrong. Also, the movement of the aliens seems just a little bit off. The game starts off a little bit slow, but once it gets going, it's actually pretty fun. B grade. Hat Trick. I've never really cared for this arcade hockey game from Ballycente. It just didn't seem all that fun. But for this video, I really gave it a chance. It's not terrible if you know what to do. Basically, if the opponent has the puck, focus on blocking it and then worry about trying to score. The sounds are still bad and the graphics are minimal. This might be more fun as a two-player game, but I don't have any friends. C grade. Ikari Warriors. SNK's arcade classic appears for the 7800. Battle in the jungle, blasting enemy soldiers, and stealing tanks. While this game has some nice graphics, this one frustrates me with the difficulty. 
Even on Novice, I can't get very far into it, so it's really not that fun to me. Music is annoying, but the sounds are okay, I guess. You might like this if you have the patience for it, but I don't. I want to give this a C grade, but the graphics bump it up slightly to a B. Impossible Mission. The classic Epic's computer game. Go from room to room searching for codes and puzzle pieces to Elvin's lair. I wish I had some kind of blaster to shoot those annoying robots. Graphics are pretty good in the elevator stage, but not much else. This version of the game is actually impossible, so it's best to play the hacked version instead. I know a lot of people enjoy it, but I'm really not a fan of this game. C grade. Welcome. Jinx. Based on this game, it looks like drug use was still a thing at Atari in the early 90s. The goal here is to get your ball to the exit. Don't waste time trying to play it like Breakout and just hit the bricks. No, that would be too much fun. The graphics are interesting and the sound is super annoying aside from the cool intro voice. Gameplay? Well, there isn't much. D grade. Joust. Another one of the originally released 7800 games, and another trifecta game that appeared on the 2600, 5200, and 7800. Hit the button repeatedly to get your ostrich to fly high enough to land on your enemies. It's a pretty easy game to learn. Graphics, sound, and gameplay are all great. A grade. Karateka, or Karateka? Something like that. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game by Jordan Meshner, who also created Prince of Persia. You can kind of tell by the style of character animation. The 7800 version seems like a library filler. That is to say, it's not very good. The control is awful, and it's not at all intuitive. The graphics and the sounds are terrible, too. F grade. Clax. Yeah, I know, this game was never officially released, but it was about to be when Atari pulled the plug. However, Rescue Soft Productions later released some copies in limited quantities. Anyway, I love Clax, so I wanted to include it because it's basically completed. Just match the tiles horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. This version is pretty good, but it does seem to lack sound. As it is, I'd give it a B grade. Kung Fu Master. Data East classic action fighting game. Fight your way to the top of the tower to save Sylvia from the evil, uh, magician guy? The graphics are great and the music is pretty good. The punching sounds more like gunshots though. Gameplay is about right, but don't let the enemies so much as touch you or they just won't let go. B grade. Mario Brothers. The last of the Nintendo ports to the Atari, this is another trifecta game that also appeared on the 2600 and 5200. You know the drill. Mario must clear the sewers of shell creepers, crabs, fighter flies, and other critters. Graphics and gameplay are good, but again, the sound is terrible. Be great as long as you mute it. Matt Mania Challenge. Originally an arcade game from American Technos, choose from one wrestler and wander around the ring against someone who looks just like your identical twin brother. The graphics are not great, but the animation is pretty good. Controls are okay, and I was able to randomly pull off some special moves. Music is annoying and the sounds are not great. I think some fun can be had though if you look for it. C grade. Mead 18 Ultimate Golf. This is a great looking golf game. 
Swinging the club isn't as intuitive as I like though. I tend to hook and slice the ball way too much. But once I got the hang of it, it was a little more fun. The graphics are really nice and the sound is good, but I'm grateful there's no music. This surely isn't going to supplant Awesome Golf for the Lynx or Everybody's Golf on my PS4 as my favorite golf game, but it's pretty good. B grade. Meltdown. Oh man. A light gun game where you protect your nuclear reactor from sparks. As they bounce around, they hit the bricks of your reactor and damage it. This game reminds me a little bit of Warlords in the way that you have to protect your bricks. There are power-ups you can shoot to slow things down, get larger or faster shots, and to expand your reactor again. Not the greatest game, but you might get some enjoyment out of it for a few moments. C grade. Midnight Mutants. This just might be the most ambitious Atari game ever. You play as Jimmy on a spooky adventure to save Grandpa from Dr. Evil. <laughs> You'll visit the forest, inside and outside a spooky mansion, a church, a pumpkin patch, a graveyard, and many others. The graphics here are top notch, and it's fun to see what the next screens are going to look like. Some of the music is good, but the main theme is ear grating. Gameplay is good, but it's easy to get swarmed by the enemies. This is easily an A grade game. Now I just have to find a walkthrough. Motor Psycho. A motorcycle racing game that seems to take inspiration from Sega's Hang On. The graphics are pretty cool, and I like how it appears you're racing up and down hills with the road seen off in the distance. Control is tight, and you can jump, which is not something most motorcycle racers do. Sound is terrible, as you might expect. B grade. Ms. Pac-Man. Here we have another trifecta game, the classic dot muncher coded by the game's original creators, GCC. They're the ones who also created the 7800, so you know it's going to be good. This one has all four mazes, fast action gameplay, and great control. It even includes the cutscenes and some great sounds. A grade. Ninja Golf. A side-scrolling action game where you're a ninja who hits a golf ball and then fights other ninjas, gophers, snakes, sharks, and dragons. The graphics are outstanding, but the gameplay is a little rough. The enemy ninjas tend to mob you, making it harder to kick them. One trick I learned is to jump past the gopher so he doesn't appear as often. A grade. One-on-one -on -one basketball. This is the game that saved Electronic Arts, featuring Dr. J and Larry Bird. Graphics are a little blah, but the controls are surprisingly great. A quick press of the button turns your player around, and a longer press shoots the ball or jumps if you're on defense. You can also break the backboard, but I guess I was too gentle this round. B grade. Pete Rose Baseball. This just might be my favorite baseball game for an Atari system. The graphics are great and it looks better than most NES baseball games. You can choose your pitches and control the ball as you throw it to the catcher. Fielding is a little tricky as your players can't move freely about the infield, but throwing the ball is intuitive. Also hitting is very satisfying when you see that ball launch off your bat. Crowd noise sounds like the space shuttle thrusting, and I'd really prefer it wasn't there. Otherwise, this is a great game. A grade. Planet Smashers. A space shooter with a very annoying shooting sound. This game looks incredibly simple. Just shoot objects before they hit the Earth. You can collect pods to warp yourself to the boss, or just wait till that range bar is filled up. 
You could also cloak your ship to hide from enemies. Overall, I really didn't care for this game. It's just so incredibly basic. D grade. Pole Position 2. This was the pack-in game and almost a trifecta game. The original pole position appeared on the 2600 and 5200, and it's basically the same as the 7800 game, but this one has four tracks. I remember playing this one a ton, and I actually got pretty good. The sounds and controls are great, and the graphics are also good. The scrolling is a little choppy, though. B grade. Rampage, the classic monster smashing game, or is that building smashing monster game? Whatever. You played this one before, and the 7800 version is okay. The graphics are kind of bland, and I wish there was more detail on the buildings. The sounds are really nothing special. Gameplay and controls are good enough, though. I want to give it a B, but the graphics just knock it down to a C grade. Real Sports Baseball. I guess this is also a trifecta game, huh? I just wish the 7800 version was more intuitive to play. In this game, you have to manually throw the ball for everything. Even in between plays, the computer never automatically throws the ball back to the pitcher. That's just ridiculous. There's no aspect of this game that I find fun. F grade. Robotron 2084. The classic Williams arcade game is perfectly suited for the 7800 with its amazing sprite capabilities. Funny how this game omits the border while games like 2600 Galaxian and 7800 Centipede added one. Graphics are not as detailed as the original game, but still very well done. Sounds are great and the control is good, if you're using two joysticks to play. With a single joystick, it's not quite as much fun, but still, this is an A grade. Scrapyard Dog. This is a fun side-scrolling platform game where you play as Louie searching for your kidnapped dog. The graphics are really good and there's a lot of variety to the stages even though I couldn't get to see them all. The scrolling is smooth and fast and actually it's a bit too fast. You attack by throwing cans at enemies, which is not nearly as fun as jumping on them. Also, if you don't get a shield, it's one-hit death, which can be extremely frustrating. Anyway, this is a pretty good game. B grade. Sentinel. A PAL-only game where you use your light gun to protect an invading giant alien orb. Graphics always intrigued me with its pseudo-parallax scrolling backgrounds. Music is annoying TIA chiptunes. But the biggest problem I have is the accuracy. The shot seems to be just to the right of where I'm aiming. But that just might be an issue because it's a PAL game. C grade. Summer Games. This is Epix's collection of Olympic-style games. We have diving, sprinting, relay, gymnastics, and swimming. The graphics and sounds are pretty good here, but the controls for every event, except for diving, are very confusing. You would think that hitting the button faster like in track and field would make you run faster, but nope. If you can master the controls, you might like it, but for me, it's a C grade. Super Huey. This is an arcade-style helicopter action game. There's also a simulator mode that I just never play. Just stick to the arcade mode where you can hunt enemy choppers and shoot them. It's a little bit like Battlezone. Graphics are okay, but turning can be a little choppy if you're facing downward. The controls are pretty good, though. C grade. Super Skateboarding. 
In this unique game from Absolute Software, you skate around inside the office building turning off equipment to save money on electricity. The official story isn't as good as the one I built up in my head. Something about how all the people in the world disappeared and zombie apocalypse, you know. I kind of like the graphics in this game. The controls are excellent and the gameplay is good too, but it's very easy to get lost. I really need to get a map. B grade. Tank Command. In the first of Frogo's games, you command a very weak tank on the battlefield of nearly invincible enemies. Really, it should be the other way around. Actually, what you have to do is adjust your firing arc to hit the enemies, and that makes it more complicated than it needs to be. Graphics are very bland, but the sounds and controls are pretty good. This one makes me sad because I think it really had potential. F grade. Title Match Pro Wrestling. A wrestling game from Absolute where you can choose four characters that look lifted from Double Dragon. The characters are detailed and the backgrounds are nice. Sounds are not good. They're all 2600 explosions. You can move your character around smoothly, but I can only kick or punch. There's more moves when you grapple, but it's so hard to pull off. Also, the timing of the game is just way too fast. D grade. Touchdown Football. Another electronic arts sports game. This one wasn't as well received as one-on-one -on -one basketball, or certainly Madden Football. They must have decided that this side perspective doesn't work for a football game as well as behind the quarterback does. Graphics are minimal and the sounds are okay, but the music is painful. Controls are okay, but it's the play selection and the gameplay that's just awful. I'm giving this an F grade. Tower Toppler. Also known as Nebulous, Castellian, Cryo Chicken Land, and Sublime, this game has you climbing to the top of a tower for nefarious purposes. I love the graphics and how the tower rotates. It looks weird in emulation though, you really need to see it on a real TV. Control is good here, but the gameplay is definitely challenging. I may have beaten the second tower once in my whole life. This is a B grade. Water Ski. Frogo's other game sees you driving a boat staring down a treacherous river with a skier behind you. Now I live in the city known as the water ski capital of the world and I've only ever seen boats and skiers on a very open lake, never on a very narrow river. You can control the boat and the skier separately which makes it overly complicated. Like Tank Command the graphics are really bland, but the sounds are okay. I like the premise of this game but there's just too many obstacles to make it any fun. D grade. Winter Games. Another games game from Epix. Too bad we didn't get California games on the 7800. Anyway, this one is a bit better than Summer Games, I think. The events are biathlon, speed skating, ski jump, and bobsled. The graphics are really good and the controls actually make sense. Well, for the most part. I've never gotten the hang of the ski jump. The sounds are pretty decent as well. B grade. Xenophobe, the classic Midway arcade game that's appeared on quite a few systems. Clear grizzly aliens from space stations by blasting them all and collecting important artifacts. You can get better weapons and bombs to help you in your mission. The controls, sounds, and graphics are all good, and I like the large variety of rooms to explore. You can also play this simultaneously with a friend if you have any. A grade. Z 
Xevious. Namco's top-down arcade shooter. Is this the first shooting game to scroll upwards like this? Most games before it were single screens like Galaga and didn't really throw random enemies at you. Not only do you have to battle air targets, but you have to hit some of those ground targets as well. This is a great conversion of the arcade. Sure, the graphics look a bit different, but it works. Sounds and music on the TIA chip are pretty good here for a change. B grade. Alright, well there you have it. The 58 commercially released Atari 7800 games. So how well did I do? Do you agree with my rankings of the games? Let me know down in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, thank you for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye everybody.